Hello Internet, welcome to another Antina tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss parabolic reflector antenna, popularly known as dish antenna also. Now this is one of the most popular antenna types that we see in our everyday life. Now we'll try to understand the working and the theory behind the parabolic reflector antenna. Before we start, uh, the fundamentals of working of a reflector parabolic antenna. Please understand that these antennas are used for very very high frequencies in the range of 1 GHz and above. So, I'd like you to note down the applications of this antenna first. They are used for, popularly used for direct broadcast television, microwave links again in the range of gigahertz. They are used in satellite communication. The size of these antennas become extremely large when we talk about using them in satellite communication and radio astronomy. Now the basic design of this antenna looks like a paraboloid and if we look at the side view of this antenna it's going to look something like this. The curvature of this parabolic antenna uh, may vary depending upon the application uh, for which this antenna is being used. Now, in order to study the basics of this antenna, we need to understand focus, vertex, focal length, aperture, gain, and finally, feed systems. In this tutorial, I'll talk about all the other, all the things except feed systems. I'll talk about feed, feed systems in the next tutorial because they constitute a whole lot of discussion and theory. Now when we talk about parabolic reflector antenna, the dish that we see is just a reflector of the signal. It is not producing the signal or it is not actually radiating the signal. The antenna which is radiating the signal lies at a point, at this special point which is known as focus. So the first thing is that we need to place our antenna at a very special point which is known as focus. Now what happens is the main function of this parabolic reflector antenna is to convert spherical wavefronts into planar wavefronts. This antenna that we place at the focus could be radiating in all directions. This could be radiating in only directions. Now all the radiations that are radiated from the antenna placed on the focus they, they are reflected back from the surface of the parabolic antenna and finally the spherical wavefronts they convert into parallel waves known as planar wavefronts and that makes this antenna extremely directional as you can see all the waves are now are directing to just one direction and that too in a pencil beam manner. They are almost parallel to each other. They diverge at a very far off distance which is very very far off. That is why they are extremely useful in satellite communication. The, the resultant beam uh, of transmission from this antenna more or less looks like a laser beam. 
Now, what is important about this focus point? Now, whenever a wave touches the parabolic antenna and reaches uh, reaches the face of the parabolic antenna, the distance covered by the wave is going to be the same. For example, A1 plus A2 is equivalent to B1 plus B2 and the third wave that I've drawn just now we could write it as C1 and C2 this will be equivalent to C1 plus C2 also so the distance traveled by all the waves uh, originating from the antenna placed in focus is going to be the same so there is no phase difference between the waves also that that makes it an extremely special antenna but that would not happen if if we if we digress our position of placement of antenna from focus so this focus point is very 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 important and obviously this length that a wave covers from the originating antenna and reaching the face of the parabolic antenna is known as the focal length which remains constant this is going to be constant for a particular parabolic reflector antenna now once we know the application of this parabolic reflector antenna which is extremely high directivity by virtue of its uh, shape and its geometry we could now concentrate on <coughs> focusing on advantages and disadvantages of this antenna uh, this antenna surely gives us very very high gain and high directivity the directivity of this antenna is is mm, super super high and it is sometimes two or three degrees T radians for very very directional antennas so directivity could be of the order of two to three radians and the disadvantages is uh, of course the size and the cost involved in maintaining this antenna it requires reflector and driven element the element placed at the focus is going to be the driving element and of course we have a huge and a large deflector and now let's talk about a few governing formulas for parabolic reflector antenna the first is going to be the focal length if you were to find the focal length of a parabolic reflector antenna the formula will be d square upon 16c where d is the diameter of the reflector and c is the depth of the reflector so depth is uh, basically how diverged this parabolic antenna is this is going to be the depth this part is depth and of course from the face of the parabolic reflector we can find the diameter now one important formula for reflector antennas that you would need to remember and learn by heart to solve numericals and questions on reflector antennas is the gain of the antenna now I've mentioned here that the gain of a parabolic antenna uh, depends on the diameter antenna efficiency and operational frequency uh, just like the gain of any other aperture antenna parabolic antennas also perform well for bigger aperture 
antenna. So the if the diameter is high, uh, if the diameter is bigger, then it'll it'll have a larger gain. And antenna efficiency is one parameter that that depends upon the quality of the dish, the material, the coating of this dish antenna is going to determine the antenna efficiency which is represented by K. So K is antenna efficiency and the typical values are 30% to 50%. So you'll find a value of 0.3 to 0.5 in numericals and D is the diameter of the parabolic reflector antenna and lambda is the op operational wavelength. So the gain is directly proportional to diameter, antenna efficiency and frequency. It is inversely proportional to lambda of course. If you want to express this in terms of frequency it becomes f squared by c squared. And then finally, finally the high directivity of this antenna is attributed to the formula of its half power beam width which can be represented by phi and it has a formula of 70 lambda upon d so uh, from half power beam width you can calculate first null beam width also which is typically twice of half power beam width and uh, that's about it uh, with with these basic things in mind uh, you shall be able to uh, attempt questions on parabolic reflector antennas and of course how the how the driving element or the antenna which radiates the signal is placed in focus is known as the feed system so there are there are different types of feed systems for any parabolic reflector antennas that we are going to discuss in the next tutorial and thank you so much for watching this tutorial and if you found this tutorial helpful then please consider subscribing this channel and clicking on that like button that helps me a lot and thank you so much for watching this video again. Have a good day and a good life. Bye.